Hello and welcome to Wealth Management Today's YouTube channel. My name is Craig Iskowitz. I'm CEO of Ezra Group. We're a consulting firm in the wealth management and fintech space. And with me is Lex Sokolin. Hi, Lex. Hi, how are you? Welcome. Lex is a well-known fintech entrepreneur and currently the Global Director of Fintech Strategy at Autonomous Research in London. Uh, can we talk about blockchain a little bit? Uh, an article on uh, called IBM versus Microsoft, two tech giants, two blockchain visions. So can we talk a little bit about uh, not necessarily what blockchain is, but the vision of the public versus private blockchains and, and how that was going to impact the wealth management and fintech space? Sure thing. Um, and thanks for having me on the show. It's, um, it's great to, to talk futurism and, and fintech. Um, and so um, what's going on in blockchain these days is kind of um, a competition between the private and the public world and who owns it. And in a way it's almost ridiculous to say who can own the public world. Uh, but still you have all sorts of consortia uh, with all the big banks in the, you know, in the entire world uh, trying to find ways to control open source technology. If you look at the players, there's kind of two key, I'd say, technologies today that are making good headway. They're both open source, but they're open source in different ways. And so one of them is called Hyperledger. Mm -hmm. And Hyperledger is an open source consortium. Um, it has um, dozens and dozens of large banks, asset managers contribute and participate. Um, startups um, all participate in Hyperledger and contribute their technology into an open source pool. And IBM is very, very involved in uh, Hyperledger and they've been building on top of some of the core protocols um, involved uh, in that community. But the thing about Hyperledger is that you might have a common base, so everybody sits on the same blockchain, meaning by everybody I mean um, equities or bonds or actual assets would be digitized and they would sit on a, on a technology. Uh, and the use cases themselves, so uh, trading and settlement uh, or money movement or payments, all of those use, case, uh, use cases can be built into apps and owned by companies. Mm -hmm. So if you're a very big bank, that's kind of a nice to have, right? You, right. you might want to have some intellectual property or at least Pretend that you can create intellectual property that's that's worth having and is and is good and useful. So the other alternative that's out there is Ethereum, uh, and there's an enterprise version of Ethereum um, that's backed by J.P. Morgan, also as part of a consortium um, and with a number of other banks. Um, and Ethereum is much closer to the Bitcoin version of the world where you have all the artists and the hackers and the anarchists who you know, think that the world has to be decentralized and banks should fall apart and governments should fall apart and all that. Um, but the amazing thing about Ethereum is um, that developers all over the world are, are contributing to this community and so um, the idea is it's actually much easier to get talent, uh, get uh, people who know these very futuristic technologies to build things for you. And, and Microsoft wants to host all financial data there is, right? Their goal is um, to scale Azure cloud services uh, to be 100% of all financial data. It's, it's easy to deploy. Um, it's almost an afterthought. It just comes as part of the, the cloud service itself. It's like an app store. Right. Um, and so, you know, these are two gigantic tech companies, Microsoft and IBM, um, going after the future of the financial services ecosystem um, but in, in very different ways. So with, with um, we're talking about a public versus a private blockchain, but they're both open source. So what's the difference for banks or wealth management firms when they're, pro when they're looking at these two choices of Hyperledger and Ethereum? Are they mutually exclusive? Can they work together? Or, uh, and is there advantages to one over the other? Yeah, you know, I think with scaled and real financial services, you're always going to have a private blockchain and, and all that means is that you know what the network is ahead of time right. versus a public blockchain where it's like anybody and everybody can be a participant. Um, and so even in taking something like Ethereum, um, you end up applying it to a private network. We're talking about IBM versus Microsoft and two visions, but are the, do you see one succeeding over the other? 
You know, that's a good question, and I think it's a question about um, control and who controls intellectual property and who controls the, um, the assets and how much they can do it. Because if you go further down the Ethereum route and more towards the Microsoft strategy, you're really commodi you're commoditizing data, but then you're commoditizing all the stuff that floats up from the data. So uh, legal contracts can be turned into code, into software, right? So you have smart contracts. Um, and then that means you can have derivatives and bonds and insurance contracts um, that are just software that's deployed on a software provider. So I think there is one vision of the world where, you know, as much of the human work of finance is just software running on the cloud, um, right. and it's very automated, and you know, a giant far a server farm owns all that data and just mm -hmm. charges you hosting services. Sure. Um, and then humans do the client service work. I think there's an, an and in that case, uh, life is pretty hard for financial services companies. Which one do you prefer? Which one do you think has the, the most chance of success in gaining critical mass? Um, I think in financial services, in the short term, we're going to see a lot of hyperledger deployments. Uh, we'll see stock markets starting to run on blockchains that use some of that stuff. Uh, we'll see derivatives run on blockchains out of again out of hyperledger companies. Um, and I think in the short term, that's the easiest path forward because a lot of folks, you know, can control and understand and fund and own this stuff. I think longer term for the the world, um, Ethereum has uh, absolutely incredible potential and it's probably um, you know going to attract just a, a ton of um, creativity and and momentum. Whether it translates into financial services or not, it's hard to tell. But you know, when in twenty years we're talking through um, uh, holographic drones or whatever, they're all going to be connected through Ethereum. You know, through um, through the blockchain there.